Hello friends, welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a queer relationship. I'm here to help you figure out what's really going on in your relationship to help get you out and on the road to recovery. Today I'm going to talk to you about little ways or big ways that you might change when an abusive person starts to take over your life and or how like if it's your sister or your friend or whoever, some kind of loved one that, you know, they start dating someone and you start to notice like there's these certain things like they're behaving differently, they're dressing differently, and so on and so forth. There's like a weird... Oh, they're testing a siren. Okay, sorry about that. I was like, what is it? It's, it sounded like a weird, like a, a church bell. I don't know. Anyway, I know I didn't like it either. It was weird. Sorry about that. What a great start to our episode. We're going to continue because I'm a human and I'm not in a studio and that's life. Um, before we begin, are you okay? We're going to move on, okay? <laughs> I know, it's hard sometimes. Um, let's talk about our struggles and successes. Pip, I think he's going to come up and hang out with me. Um, a struggle is that I'm not feeling great. I'm in a current like autoimmune flare-up and have been feeling just like really run down, can't sleep, um, lots of body pain, um, can't really exercise, which doesn't feel good, because exercise brings me a lot of joy. I mean, I can, I can go on walks and stuff like that, but I can't do the kind of exercise I usually do, because I don't want to like hurt myself, make it worse, make it last longer, so I'm just kind of like riding the wave. Um, and it's disappointing, I don't love it, it's one of those things where like, if, if you have an autoimmune disease, or issues um like if you have one that flares up and gets better and flares up and gets better like you you feel better and you kind of forget that this is a part of your makeup um and so then when it comes back you're like oh man like i've been really lucky that it's been so good for so long but um anyway actually i think one of the last episodes that i did record before i took my extended break was about physical issues and i think i was talking about how I've been feeling pretty good for a while, so that is no longer the case, but hopefully I'll feel better again soon. Pip is saying hi if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, a success is that, um, that I did take a break from social media, and I talked about this in the last episode, but my success was something different. Um, so my success is that, like, you know, I think that we live in a world where we're so attached to our phones and we're attached to, like, a certain type of connection, which isn't really connection at all. Um, and there's a lot of pressure, especially if you are a creator to create in a certain way and a certain amount and all that stuff. And also to, to allow people to talk to you in a certain way. Like if you put yourself out there, like, oh, well, I've really had people straight up say that if you put yourself out there, like this is just part of it and you have to put up with it and blah, blah, blah. Like a person was recently trying to like argue with me on YouTube. And I was like, I know how this goes. I've been talked to like this before. I don't need it. You're trying to roll me up. It's not going to work. Good luck with whatever you're doing kind of thing. Um, and they were just like, well, you're on social media, so I'm sorry, this is just part of it. And I was like, um, actually it's not like, I don't need to read your comment or respond. Like you're entitled to your own feelings and I don't really have time or energy for it. So bye. Um, and it took me a long time to get there. Cause like I said, you do kind of feel like, well, if you're out here, like you should be having these conversations with people and like, I really don't. So that's a big success. Just, um, reframing my mindset around social media and how much time I really want to be on it and, you know, trying not to really use my phone when my son's around, which I did kind of do for a long time and just trying to like, just live in the moment and, you know, worry about social media when I have time for it. So that's been great. Feels good. Um, okay. So I want to talk about like how, so Let's say you have a friend, because if it's you, you're probably not going to notice because you're being love bombed and you think this person is great and amazing and this is what you've been waiting for and it's great and like, you're not going to notice. So if I'm sitting here, like if you're removed from it, like I am, you might be like, oh crap, I did do that. That did happen to me. Um, but if you're in it right now, you're probably, not, well, if you're being love bombed right now and it's the beginning, you're probably not listening to this podcast. So let's just say that you have a friend. Someone you know starts dating someone new and all of a sudden they're acting different very early on. Um, a lot of this we've talked about before. You'll see isolation probably pretty early on. 
you'll notice they're spending less and less time with their friends, family, doing the things that they usually do. It's very, and a lot of people will be like, oh, it's normal. It is pretty standard for people to start dating and want to like spend all their time together because it's like, oh, it's puppy love or whatever. Pip, you're getting fur on me and you're not even supposed to shed. What are you doing? Um, and yes, there is some element, element of that because of the excitement and stuff, but I've talked a lot about how dangerous love bombing is and how like it's good to take things slow. You know, it's your life. You're going to, excuse me, you're going to do what you're going to do, but, um, the person sort of just like disappears and you don't really have access to them anymore. And maybe the way that they talk to you is a little different. Maybe they're kind of like less patient. They're a little bit short with you because probably, um, the abuser right early on is trying to divide them from you or like separate them from you, um, so that they don't have you as a support system. So maybe, they're still reaching out or you're still reaching out to them, but they're just not as there's something different about them and how they interact with you. Um, one thing that I've seen a lot of is like, so for example, someone who never paints their nails and then all of a sudden the abuser's like, I really like people like when people have their nails painted black, I just like, it's such turn on and I love it so much. All of a sudden your friend or your sister is painting their nails black all the time. And you're like, that's weird. I never noticed. You never painted your nails. You never, now you're getting manicures, spending all this money to have your nails painted all the time, specifically black or whatever. I did that for a while. Yeah. Um, I was spending a lot of money to like paint my nails black because my bees are like that. And like, what? I have not gone to, I think I got my nails done the first time I went to Mexico city to be my friend because to meet up with my friend, because I was so excited to see him and I hadn't seen him in like 13 years. And for a while, like when I would travel, like before I would leave, I would want to get my nails done. Like if it was like a week long trip or something. And now I just don't, I don't enjoy it. It's not something I want to spend my money on. And like, I do like, I do like having my nails done. I feel like pretty when my nails are done. I just don't want to. And yeah, for a long time, that's something I did. And it's, it's weird to me. Like, yes, again, like a lot of people will be like, well, it's, I like some people will say like, oh, I like beards on men or I don't like beards on men. And let me say your partner has a beard and you're like, I don't really like beards. They're scratchy or whatever. It's okay to say that you don't love beards, but like to be like, I only like people that shave or I only like people with beards and to kind of like pressure that person to look a certain way for you, I think is a little weird. Um, especially if they've always like this person has always had a beard or this person has never painted their nails. They don't care at all or they never wore jewelry or dress really feminine, but all of a sudden they're wearing jewelry and they're wearing a certain type of outfits and blah, blah, blah. And you get the sense that there's some, I don't know, like manipulation happening where they're like, oh, well, you know, my ex has always painted their nails black and I really like that. Like that was something that I really liked. Like I was wondering if you could do that for me and blah, blah, blah. So you're just seeing this, like this, the way they portray themselves, is this the complete opposite of who they were before this person came along? That can be a huge red flag. Um, like I said, clothing, the way they look, the way they act around you, um, the amount of accessibility you have to them. Um, you might see someone who's becoming increasingly more like aggressive, like rude. I'm trying to find the right words where, you know, if you try to talk to them about something or you notice something that's not right, or you try to set a boundary, they're just really like combative and really defensive of the person, even if it's really early on, um, to where you're like, this isn't normal. Um, cause I remember in the early days, so I'm actually going to contradict myself in the early days, I was able to express my concerns about my abuser's behavior to close friends who still had access to me because they were physically in my space. I had someone staying with me when I first started hanging out with my abuser and my niece came to visit me. And in fact, I'm just going to throw this in there. When I told my abuser, like within a couple of days after hanging out that someone was going to come stay with me for two months, they looked me in the eyes and said, well, that's not, not ideal, which is a huge red flag, right? It's not ideal that you're going to have someone here that's going to get in the way of me taking over your entire life. Didn't know what it meant at the time, but like during those first couple of months, I was able to be like, I don't like this behavior. I don't understand why they're acting like this. And there were even moments where I was like, this isn't going to work. Like this person is out of control. But when those people were gone, because they had to go back to their lives and there was no one else who had ac access to me from the outside. Um, and you could ask like, well, why did you stay during that time? Well, because when I tried to break up with them, they, they tackled me and, and 
quote unquote, wouldn't let me. Like a lot of people, again, on the outside looking in, you're like, well, that's silly. Why didn't you just, well, I did try and it didn't work. And if you're like, well, if you try to break up with someone and it didn't work, try again. Well, you kind of start to learn that you can't, like, it's not going to work. Even if I try, it just doesn't work. Um, and I've talked about that a lot before, but, um, so I'm saying that, you know, in the beginning, I did have the ability to say, hey, these are some concerns I have. Like, yes, I'm seeing what you're seeing. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Yeah, this isn't normal. But that goes away. And when you see someone who's really protective of someone really early on, like I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm talking to someone and I share a concern with you or you ask me something and I'm like, well, to be honest, you know, this happened the other day and, you know, I'm just not sure about it or not sure if I want to pursue this or whatever. Um, I'm able to like express that and I'm able to be honest about that. Um, you notice something and I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really like, like they, they got really drunk and they were kind of out of control and I didn't like it. Um, and this is what I'm going to do about it or whatever. I don't know. But if in the beginning, I don't know what the beginning means to you you know, you're asking this person, you're like, well, I noticed this happened the other day, or I didn't really like how they talk to you. Is this how they usually talk to you? And they're like, okay, they had a really hard life. Okay. They're not like, maybe you're too harsh. Maybe you just need to give them a chance. You don't really know them. That's, that's a big red flag because they don't really know them either. Like when you first meet someone, I don't care how much time you spend together in the beginning, you don't know that person. It takes a while to get to know someone. It really does. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but like I'm 36 y'all. Do you think you're going to know 36 years and you're not going to ever know everything about me? Because I don't know everything about me. There's things that I have sh had shoved down forever um, and things that I've yet to discover about myself. You're not going to know me in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And I'll give you another example. I lived with my ex-husband for like six years, I think. And then I lived with him again for two more years after I was with my abuser. I don't know him. I know some things about him. And yes, you can argue like we've been separated for a long time. We don't live together. We're not partners. So he's changed. I've changed. And that is very true. But I don't know him. I never did. I know some things about him. I know some likes and dislikes, but I don't know like his deep like feelings or anything like that because we didn't like, we just didn't. Right. So defending someone like fighting to the death for someone that you just met is a little scary for me. Um, what else? I guess I didn't have that many examples. Sometimes it can be big things, like I said, big, like large behavior changes. Um, you know, they're increasingly, increasingly not showing up. They're making excuses. Um, they're spending all their time with that person. Um, but it can be little things too. Like I said, you notice like all of a sudden, every time we see them, their nails are painted black or, you know, maybe their behavior changes, like when that person walks in the room. So maybe they showed up to a party and everything's fine. And then the, you know, the other person comes and all of a sudden they're kind of like groveling, like walking around, like getting that person a drink, making sure that person's okay, making sure that person's happy. Like that person is all they can see. They've got blinders on. Like, whereas before they were like socializing with people. Um, I'll tell you another thing. And some people might not like this, but like, so say that person does come, it's early on, they still have access to their friends and stuff. And they're just like checking their phone a lot. They're on their phone a lot because that is something that I remember. I remember being at work and not while I was interpreting, but during downtime, just being glued to my phone because there was always an issue. There was always an argument. There was always something that they're trying to pull me away from and, or that that person's already like becoming so addicted to this person that they can't enjoy the people who they've enjoyed for the last 10 or 15 years of their life or five years or whatever because that person's not there because they've been spending so much time with them because they get that dopamine kick from the love bombing or from maybe they're already like love bombing, devalue, love bombing, discard, love bombing, right? Like whatever the nasty roller coaster of crap. So like they walk in and everyone's getting together and they're just like, are you going to come? Like, are you going to like, you can't see their phone, but they're just, they can't enjoy it because I remember feeling like that for a long time. There were a lot of people who would attest to that too. Like I just was attached to my phone because I was attached to them and I couldn't let go. Whereas now I'm like, all right, here I am. We're hanging out. I might check my phone here and there, especially if my son's not with me, just to make sure nothing weird comes through. My family's far away, but I'm investing in the people around me. Whereas during those two and a half years, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I was obsessed. That's 
genuinely what happens in our brains. Like we're like, I can't, I need another hit. Where are they? When are they coming? Or, you know, I don't want anything bad to happen because they're not with me. And sometimes bad things happen when they're not with me. It's all just really messy. So I don't know if this episode was exactly where I wanted to go with it. I don't know if it made a lot of sense. Um, I just, I guess, want to validate some people who've seen this happen, who have watched people get sucked into these kind of things and you kind of lose that person. You watch the light go from their eyes. You watch their whole entire lives change to just mold around this person um, because they're being controlled. They're being abused. They're being manipulated. They're being guilt tripped, all of this stuff. So I just wanted to validate you if you're like, have ever, like I've talked to people before where like I've mentioned something like that with the nails painting and they're like, you know what? I didn't really notice that. But now that you mention it, I did think that that was weird. And I did think that maybe it had something to do with that person who they're dating or whatever. So I hope that this helps you feel like, okay, yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm not making this up. They're so different. And it's like, again, sometimes in big ways and sometimes in subtle ways that you're like, I feel like I'm just looking for excuses here. I'm looking for reasons to be not liking that person, but they're there and they can be hard to spot. But the point of this is that with an abusive person, the abuse starts from the day one and it's all encompassing. It takes over every aspect of people's lives most of the time. So you're not making things up. You're not seeing stuff probably is happening. And again, a lot of people ask, they're like, what can I do about it? Just make sure that person knows you're there for them when they're ready to leave. Once they see it, which, you know, you're not going to be able to help them see it um, <clears throat> and be for them, be there for them when they are actually trying to get out. So that's all I have for today. I hope that was helpful. It was kind of random, but thanks for hanging out with me. Um, go drink some water, do something nice for yourself, and I'll be back next week with more.